So just for um, beans were on the topic of oxygen, uh, we would um, you know explore uh, ways in which you know any one of us really could find out how much oxygen was in the air surrounding anywhere on this planet. So wherever we are, we could find out cheaply uh, the amount of oxygen in the air, and if people wanted to, they could monitor it. So we know that 10 cc's of air consists of 20% oxygen. Uh, 10 cubic centimetres. Uh, if we could find a way uh, to remove the oxygen out of the air, that would leave 8 cc's of air made up of other uh, molecules which is found in the air such as nitrogen, uh, carbon monoxide, xenon, uh, krypton, other types of uh, gases. Um, but what I was interested in is just finding out a nice simple experiment which any one of us could do uh, to find out the quantity of oxygen in the air. So I came across this one which involved steel wool which is iron and vinegar. So what you do as you can see in the top of that test tube there it's graduated so you can see that there's 10 cc's to start with. On the side I had to drill a little hole which wasn't easy in glass. Uh, let me see. See if I can zoom in, you can just see that little hole. The reason for that is, is when you submerge it into the water, it won't go above the 10 uh, mark on there. So uh, what I did is you soak a little bit of uh, wire wool in household vinegar because vinegar is uh, slightly acidic and what that will do will cause oxidation of the steel wool and will get iron oxide forming. Uh, at the top, uh, you, you might be able to see if I zoom in just a slight discoloration in that wire wall where it's rusted basically. And what it's done is it's consumed uh, as it's rusted within a short period of time as well. Um, it's rusted and the oxygen has attached itself now to the iron uh, in iron, oxidis iron oxidization and as a result it creates a vacuum in the test tube and as you can see the water level rises in the inner column or the test tube and uh, it stops when all the oxygen is consumed in the um, tube in the inside and you can see it stopped around about the 8 mark and that would mean that 20% of the air in the tube was oxygen and that, the reason why it created a vacuum is because it was absorbed into the uh, iron filings, or sorry, the uh, wire wall. So it oxidised. So we removed the oxygen out of the tube and we caused a chemical reaction where it fused with the steel wall uh, in an oxidation process. So I just wanted to share this with you. You know, it doesn't cost a lot for a bit of steel wool and you can find these graduated uh, test tubes on eBay and all you've got to do is drill a little hole in the uh, 10 cc region so that it doesn't so it gives you an accurate reading every time you submerge it into water upside down like I have done there uh, you don't need a conical flask like I've got there you could use an ordinary plastic uh, you know bowl or something like that but uh, most people have got these things in the households and just by mixing uh, the vinegar with the steel wool, squeezing out all the excess vinegar and then placing it in the tube, uh, placing it upside down uh, in some water, it will cause a vacuum as the oxygen um, you know, becomes part of the iron in an iron oxidisation uh, process and it will tell you how much oxygen is in your vicinity of where you are. It do, I don't think it could get any cheaper than this really. I think anyone could do this for a, the cost of a couple of pounds and that's why I thought if you was concerned about depleting oxygen levels you know this would give you a good idea. Uh, I know it's only accurate to within a 2% um, graduated mark on this test tube uh, but I was thinking of modifying the tube so that it would give us graduations in uh, you know 0.1 cc's 
and that would give us uh, an accuracy to you know one um, percent, and that that really would be beneficial uh, to monitor the actual um, levels of oxygen in the atmosphere. Again, I, what I like about this experiment is it's cheap, it's easy to replicate, it's not very complex, and yet it returns good results. You can see that the level in the inside tube has risen and the, you know that's only because of the process of removing the oxygen out of the air and fusing it with the wire wall at the top of the tube so you know I just thought I'd share this with you guys you know it's something that any one of us could monitor and um, you know I think it's worth monitoring um, you know along other things uh, so maybe on the website I'll put a weekly uh, measurement of the oxygen content and I'll also try and um, improve the accuracy of the experiment so that we can determine you know this right down to 1% um, if not even more accurate. I've got a feeling I'm going to need some capillary tubes or something like that and I'm going to have to mark them on myself uh, in the percents each individual uh, graduation of 1% but you know it's not um, unachievable it's something that can be done the other thing I've got uh, come through the other day was some stainless steel washers and this is what I was going to use um, to make my oxygen uh, hydrogen generator um, you know and uh, I was going to show you just the process of doing that as well over the next few days so you know I'm going to leave it there with that guys I thought this was a brilliant uh, way of finding out how much oxygen is in your uh, vicinity wherever you are in the world and uh, it doesn't get much cheaper than that I mean you haven't got to buy gas analyzers or anything like that so that's the beauty of this again um, you know it's making the most with the small things that you've got around you um, and utilizing them to the maximum to get good results um, I don't think anyone would disagree that that was a good result and um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, there has been a few comments on previous videos with regards to slight changes in oxygen levels. Um, I just wanted to give you this for instance. I know that those people that do go up Mount Everest um, carry oxygen with them. And at that altitude of 28,000 feet, you've usually got about 7.2% uh, of oxygen at that altitude. Uh, around about 16,000 feet, I think it's about 11% and you know you can operate some most people can operate at around about 10,000 feet I think uh, so long as they're not doing something too strenuous but the point is is you know I would imagine it would take a lot to remove 10% of the oxygen that's present in the air at the moment uh, for it to start really causing serious problems so you know even if it got to, what I'm saying is even if it got to 10% uh, the reservoir shrunk that much you know you could still at that point do something about the situation perhaps uh, making your own oxygen hydrogen generator um, at that point uh, there would be uh, many telltale signs in any case people that live in at higher altitudes would become more prone to altitude sickness and uh, you know the, the lacking of oxygen in the air uh, would make them um, or force them to lower altitudes. So I'll leave it there guys with that. I thought I'd include this uh, in the video because not only did it have a good uh, altitude scale we can see here at zero or zero feet uh, sea level um, the oxygen levels are 20.9 and the altitude category would be low. Uh, it also gives you uh, an example Boston MA uh, but you can see as the categories go down, uh, you know, the altitude increases and at 10,000 feet it's 14.3% and the category is high, um, you know, it's give a region of Aspen CO. But I wanted to just include this because this company sells these altitude um, generators and the point of this is for athletes that want to um, acclimatize to you know a region at which they're going to be taking part in an event and it states here an altitude generator can produce varying oxygen levels from sea level 20.9 percent oxygen to 20,000 feet to 6,000 meters 
9.5% oxygen. By pre-acclimatising, you can run, climb, ski, bike at high altitudes without altitude sickness and with more speed and endurance. So it just so shows that, you know, at low levels of oxygen uh, in the environment, we can still function. Um, but, you know, if it ever got to that level, you know, I would have thought that most of you would be considering then perhaps um, at some point uh, creating an oxygen generator where you could, you know, um, function more, you know, physically um, and, and more clearly because I think that's one of the problems with altitude sickness is that, you know, you begin to uh, think illogical uh, with regards to even simple uh, things and I think this is one of the um, reasons why at the altitude of about 28,000 feet if we take Mount Everest for instance you know uh, Everest there at the bottom 29,000 feet we can see that there's only 6.9 percent uh, concentration of oxygen in the air and uh, you know if you got to that level so I think you're in the critical level um, at that, at that point and you're going to need some supplements of oxygen from somewhere so you know I just thought I'd include that um, some people uh, you know might have worried that even if it dropped fractionally you know to even 18 percent that even at that level it would be considered minimum and you know we, we do we do have people that live at uh, relatively high altitudes but they've acclimatized to it I think that that is one of the problems it's whether you have acclimatized uh, long enough um, to deal and cope with the um, low levels of oxygen in the atmosphere. I think that makes a big difference. If you suddenly experience low levels of oxygen, I think that that's where the problems can occur. So, you know, I just thought a nice thing to add to the video uh, in any case. So, guys, we'll leave it here with the visual data of the last 24 hours of the magnetosphere and just bear in mind that what you're looking at right now has currently weakened by 20% the implications of this is still um, you know work in progress uh, as well as all the other things we do on this channel um, and obviously the dedicated now website uh, to just specifically the magnetosphere and the magnetic pole migration is there and uh, continues to be improved uh, weekly. Um, just want to mention the link down below guys if you find this information and content on this channel and on the website of use and you find it informing maybe you'd like to help contribute uh, to some of the work uh, that goes on on this channel and uh, I'll just say what I usually do guys you take care, enjoy your weekend and I'll say bye for now